In order to get success, like what you need to do is be putting in about 10 times more effort than you're actually doing now. And any missed goal is because of a lack of effort put into it. You're listening to Thrive by Design, business, marketing, and lifestyle strategies for your jewelry brand to flourish and thrive. Let's get started. Welcome to the Thrive by Design podcast, episode 134. Hey there, it's Tracy Matthews here, the Chief Visionary Officer over at FlourishThriveAcademy.com and your host for the Thrive by Design podcast. I'm super stoked to be here. I can still say Happy New Year because today is officially when this episode is launched. It's still January 2018, so we can say Happy New Year still. I think the rule is you can say Happy New Year until the end of the end of January. So here we go. We're kicking off the new year with a bang. I'm so excited. I've welcomed hundreds and hundreds of designers into our Laying the Foundation course. We're really excited about it. We are (laughs) blowing up that Facebook group. It's been a blast. People are really getting their brand in order, building their desired sharing proposition, and creating a brand journey that is going to be, you know, amazing for lifetimes to come for all these individual designers. So I am very excited for them. I'm very excited for me because I love this process. And in that, you know, part of the reason why I'm so passionate about what I do here every single week at Flourish and Thrive Academy and on this podcast, Thrive by Design, is I get to teach things and I love to learn. I love teaching and learning. I love teaching what I've learned, all of it. So it's really fun for me to come in here. And so I love to digest new information. I love trying out new things. I love evolving as a person and a brand. I am one of those personal growth junkies. I think you you could probably call me that. I'll let you call me that. That's cool. And in the process of doing this, I've been over the past several years pretty obsessed with not only podcasts, listening to different podcasts so that I can learn and uplevel my business, but I'm also obsessed with reading and listening to books on tape. And I've always been an avid reader, but something happened as I got a little bit older and got a little bit busier is that the only time I really had left to read was in the evening. And I don't like reading business books before I go to bed because it makes me start to think about work and I am a terrible sleeper. And I, so I I stopped reading kind of like any other time I have to actually like work or play, I'm always working or playing. So there's very little time for me to actually sit down, open a book and read. So several years ago, I started listening to audiobooks. Actually, that's sort of a lie because I started listening to audiobooks back in the 90s. Uh, We would sit in our little tiny studio. I would sit there with uh, my two production workers, Mara and Gabby, and we would listen to audiobooks. Sometimes it was mystery books. Sometimes it was business books. Sometimes it was other things. But it really kept us actually really focused for a couple of reasons because we weren't talking to each other and getting distracted. But we were also learning something at the same time. And so a couple of years ago, I, I could tell that my business book consumption was sort of failing. So I started opting to listen to business books on tape. Uh, Not on tape. (laughs) That's so archaic. What I meant is on Audible. (laughs) I love Audible. If you don't have a subscription, you should definitely subscribe to it. I'm not even an affiliate or anything for Audible, but I should be because I love it so much. Anyway, I started to listening to books on tape. I would go to my mastermind and the guy who ran my mastermind, Ryan Levac, my mentor, would always give us a bunch of books. And so I started just ordering those books on Audible so I could listen to them and consume them. And throughout that process, not only of being in a mastermind, but also just getting back to listening to audiobooks, either when I was walking around the city or on the subway or while I was getting dressed in the morning, I was able to consume a lot more information and be able to digest it in a way that actually made sense for me and actually allowed me to put it into action. Whereas when I was reading books right before bed, I wouldn't sleep, I'd be stressed. And it's not as hard as like sitting down and actually doing the work. I love audiobooks. So if you are someone who's like me, who's an audio learner, great idea to get an Audible account and great idea to take courses that actually have an audio component and listen to this podcast. That's why we're doing it. So over the past couple of years, and even beyond that, but especially over the past couple of years, I've read some or listened, I always say read because it's kind of like reading, but listen to some really amazing books. And I wanted to share some of those to you because there are a few that have really blown my mind so much that my whole life changed because of it. And I talk about them occasionally in our closed communities over at Flourish and Thrive, but I really felt like it was time to share it with the world. So here we are on 
the Thrive by Design podcast with, you know, tens of thousands of listeners all over, hopefully hundreds of thousands by now, but uh, listening to this podcast and helping, you know, I really want to help you build that business and brand that you desire, uh, whether you're doing it with us over at Flourish and Thrive Academy or whether you're doing it, you know, here on the Thrive by Design podcast. You know, that's that's what this is all about. Anyway, I wanted to dive deep into this book. Uh, we have been having a lot of fun these past couple of weeks in our Laying the Foundation course. We just started <laughs> module one, and it's been fun being able to support the designers and being able to watch them really evolve and grow their brands to re- create like really strong brand stories, et cetera, all that stuff. It's been awesome. And I'm so excited for this final crew of people going through Laying the Foundation Live. It's going to be awesome. I mentioned earlier that this is probably going to be our last time ever writing Laying the Foundation Live. We will still offer the program at some point, but it will not be with this live component where we give live coaching. Uh, We are, or I am moving on to different coaching programs within Flourish and Thrive Academy. And Robin is moving on to do her own wholesale coaching business. So we are not moving in different directions, moving in complementary directions, but just onto different things. And we want to be able to support the members of our community who have committed to us for uh, many, many years to watch them grow and get to their next level. So I'm excited about this. It's it's, it's already going off the hook just within the first couple of days. And uh, I'm excited for those of you who joined us. It's going to be amazing. Best year ever. So I want to dive into some of these books because I know that they will change your life and blow your mind as well. So uh, let's talk about it. So the book number one, these aren't necessarily ranked in order with the exception of this one, because this book I read it for the first time, I think, last year or the year before, but since then, I've listened to it several times, and uh, I've, I've read several of the books by these authors, Gina Wickman and Mark C. Winters. It's called Rocket Fuel, and it's about that visionary integrator collaboration that actually makes a small business survive or any business survive. So the premise of the book, Gina Wickman and Mark C. Winters also wrote traction and get a grip, which you'll I'll be mentioning later. They're also amazing books. In those books, on all three of the books, they talk about the the role of the visionary in a company and the role of an integrator in a company. And as you've heard me speak over the past several years, in fact, I adopted this term visionary before I even read the book because I really identified with that word. I was creative. I also consider myself a CEO in the sense of I like thinking about the direction of the company and moving the business forward. I love coming up with ideas. That is so much more exciting than being a chief executive officer. I'd much rather be a chief visionary officer. So years ago, we scratched the word CEO from our language over here at Flourish and Thrive, and we started calling it CVO, chief visionary officer, because I really believe that people like you and me are the same. We are visionaries. We're creative. And well, most of us are visionaries. I'm not going to say all of us because there are jewelry designers and makers who can be creative, but they might be more integrators like getting stuff done. So I uh, listened to this book and my mind was blown because I, on the score, I tested about 95% visionary and maybe 5% integrator. And the reason why this is so crazy is that for many, many years, I felt like a crazy person. Like I wasn't successful because I had a difficult time following my ideas through to completion, or I sucked because I wasn't able to continue moving forward. Like I would stop projects in the, in the halfway point or get them about 80% done. And then that would be good enough or I'd hand it off to someone else. And it was, this has been like a lifelong frustration for me. And it was a struggle. And I beat myself up about it because I felt like there was something wrong with me. And when I realized that the vision part, the thing that I do really well, coming up with the ideas, coming up with the creativity, coming up with the forward movement for the projects was my strength. Everything changed for me because it showed me that, yes, some people are actually really good at getting stuff done and that's their job, but they can't think of an idea worth anything. And it's really my belief that creatives rule the world without these creative ideas that we bring to the world. My friend said this, like creatives are the new nerd. I'm like coining that term, trademarking that term. Creatives are the new nerds because, you know, without create like creativity and ideas in the world, business can't move forward. It's without those visionaries are really important people. And being creative is such an important asset. And so I want all of you who feel the same way as me to own that and be okay with the fact that you're not good at other things in business and get people in your uh, eventually when you can to support and help you. 
And that's how you actually grow. And that's where the integrator comes in. So over here at Flourish and Thrive Academy, our integrator is Abby. She is our business manager over here. She takes my ideas and she works with a team to help make them come to fruition. She completes all the projects that I drop off the board and she is the person who helps me move things forward. In my jewelry business, I have an executive assistant named Sarah who basically is sort acts as an integrator. I tell her what needs to be done. I give her the ideas. She does it for me. We make things happen together and it's a really awesome team. And so eventually I hope you will not only read this book or listen to it on tape, but I hope that you will find uh, either the visionary to your integrator or the integrator to your visionary, because this is really, really important uh, for the long-term success of your business. So run, don't walk, buy the book right now, go on Amazon, go on Audible, go somewhere, go to your local bookstore, buy local, get the book, read or listen to it. Epic, incredible. And I'll probably spend the most time talking about this book over anything. So the next book that I just finished listening to was The 10X Rule. It's called by Grant Cardone. And this book is really all about success and success mindset and what it takes to be a success. And obviously, success means different things to different people. But uh, the thing that I love so much about this book is basically, he, I feel like he was like, I was could have written this book in a way because he was like speaking my language here. There's a really funny chapter. I'm not going to repeat it because it's like, there's bad words in it. But it's it's super funny about it's basically like stop whining, you little brat, <laughs> but with more offensive language because it, it because that's that's the kind of guy he is. But it's funny. Uh, the premise of the book is that in order to get success, like what you need to do is be putting in about 10 times more effort than you're actually doing now. And what often happens is people either aren't passionate, they have low success mindset, so they don't believe that it's possible for themselves, or they're not willing or able, or I don't want to say able, but they're not willing to put in the necessary effort to actually make their dreams a reality. And any missed goal, basically, he says, is because of a lack of effort put into it. And so you might be thinking to yourself, well, I put so much effort into it, I'm going driving myself crazy. Well, you're not being efficient enough. So this book is great. He kind of walks you through these principles and shows you how to sort of overcome that self-sabotaging behavior that we all have and how to really take your success to the next level. I loved it. I hope you do too. It's amazing. The next book that I thought was incredible, I think he also has a podcast too, is called Building a Story Brand with Donald Miller. So this is all about making your dream customer, your dream client, the center of your brand story. And it's about how you can share stories, how you can share marketing ideas, how you can share different posts, and how you can brand your business and make it about the customer as opposed to about you. And this is the struggle, what the number one of the number one struggles that I see, actually, they don't know it's their struggle, but the number one like mistake designers are making, maybe it's not a struggle, it's a mistake, is that they're talking incessantly about themselves, about their product, about their stuff, instead of their customers. It's, so what this does is when you're able to build the story of your brand around your customer is you're able to allow them to connect with what you do. And that helps you build more sales. I'm going to give you an example here. I didn't even realize I was doing this, but this is sort of the premise of dream client work. When on the video on my website, when I talk about my brand story, I talk about the fact that my mother passed away. I also talk about what I do for customers for heirloom redesign and how this is a really special process for me because I understand what they're going through because I've been through the same thing. So do you see that little shift? It's not, oh, my mom died and then I designed an heirloom ring and that's why I'm passionate about heirlooms. It's because I don't want other people to have to, I want other people to be able to have that connection to their loved one in the same way that I did. And I love designing intuitively for people. So it turns that story around and makes it about them. And so this is, you could do this in so many ways in your business, but it's really about flipping your brand story to make it about the customer instead of about yourself. The next amazing book that I think is going to be incredibly off the charts for many of you who are struggling with productivity. Last week, we talked about how to be more focused and productive and stop procrastinating. And so if you haven't listened to it, make sure that you check out episode 133. It's, it's a fun episode. I loved it. We did a little Q&A with some of the designers. So it's a great opportunity for you to do that. But if you, ha if you haven't listened to it yet, make sure that you listen to it. But this is, book is a great complement to that idea because this is really about getting, making huge impact in just 12 weeks. And so Brian P. Moran and Tom Pyle teach you how to get more done in 12 weeks. 
that most people get done all year. And it's really about setting priorities, using that three role principles, working in sprints and getting stuff done. I was about to say a bad word there, but I didn't. What is going on with me? I'm a little spicy today. Another book that I highly recommend uh, that I read a couple of years ago, it's a long one and it could also be a skimmer and they do not have it on audiobook, unfortunately. So you're going to have to actually get the hard copy was the No BS Guide to uh, Marketing to the Affluent. So for those of you who are trying to sell uh, high-end products, luxury products, this is a great book to read. It's by Dan Kennedy. He writes a ton of marketing books. They're all very long and in-depth, but it's a great book. It tells you how to to use the language that they're, you know, basically the the premise is that the affluent have endless amounts of money and they want to buy. And a lot of times the reason why we're not marketing or selling to affluent people is because of fear and all those other things. So he teaches you basically how to use their language so that you can sell more jewelry and get in with those sort of high touch people. Highly recommend it. It's a doozy though. So you might want to break it up in little sections. The next book that I love is Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. And you've probably heard me speak about this before, but I think it's one of the best books on how to use social media, not from the tricks and hacks that are actually working now, but what the platforms are actually used for. So I see designers posting things that should be on Instagram, on Facebook, and posting things that should be on Facebook, on Instagram, and not really considering like what they're actually doing on the platform. I see a lot of people trying to sell a lot of jewelry on Twitter, which that's never worked for me. And I'm always, you know, I know some people can do it, but it's, it's always baffling. Like Twitter is a news platform. It's not a place to actually like be, it's not a photo platform and that, and, and jewelry is a visual platform. So it would make more sense to be promoting most of your jewelry or using posts like that for things that are actually on Instagram or Pinterest. Like, There's ways to use Twitter for your jewelry business, but just thinking strategically about how you're actually using the different platform. And then also about how using what you're actually, the content that you're actually curating and the content that you're documenting as you go to actually sell more product. And so a lot of times what people do is they're always pitching, 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 buy this now, buy this now, buy this now, instead of adding value. And you want to continue to add value, add value, add value, and then sell. Because when you're ready to sell, that's when people are going to buy because they're so hooked on your brand. And so it's a totally different approach than you're probably taking right now. If you haven't picked up the book, make sure that you do right away. My next favorite business book is a book called The E-Myth Revisited. This is by a man named Michael E. Gerber. This book changed my life about 10 years ago, and it might change yours too. When I read this book, I realized that... I was running my business like an expensive hobby, not like an actual business. And it really changed the way I thought of how I set up the back end of my business, how I was working every day, how I, what I was actually really good at and all those sorts of things. So it's a really great foundational business book. And I highly recommend that you pick it up if you have it. And he does a lot of storytelling to kind of paint the picture of why these principles are really important. So make sure that you check out The E-Myth Revisited. Super awesome. Next book on my list, let's see, it is book number eight is The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes. And I really like this book because it's not just about what you think it would be, which would be like sales tactics and sales techniques. It's really about looking at your business as a whole with uh, their 12 key strategies to really turbocharge your growth. And so what Chet talks about uh, are the tw- his 12 strategies or 12 pillars to successful businesses, which include time management, regular training, which I'm obsessed with. That's always be learning, like listening to books like this or listening to podcasts like this, getting training for your team. That's really important. One of our core values at Flourish and Thrive is to always be learning because I think it's really important for to educate your team and get them on to that next level and this, doing the same thing for yourself. That's how you stay ahead of the curve. Uh, having effective meetings, brilliant strategies for ideas for growth, hiring superstars, getting the best buyers, those dream clients, great marketing, superior visuals, tactics to landing dream buyers. So there's he has ta- tons of tactics to help land those dream buyers really up-leveling your sales skills, bonding with your clients, and setting goals. And so I really, really love this book. I'm actually going to listen to it again because I think that there it's it's not a really long book, but it's very in-depth. And so I like to refresh things that it really struck me. So I highly recommend that you go for it. 
So over the past few years, I've been focused on hiring a dream team and have some really amazing A players over here at Flourish and Thrive and in my jewelry business, which is super exciting for me because over the years, I've hired some not so A players. And so I was just listening somewhere. I can't remember what book it was. I can't attribute this, but it was something along the line. Maybe it was the book, The Four, that I just read. Well, we'll pretend like it's The Four. I'm not sure if it was or not, but mindless attribution. A players hire A players. B players hire C players. So it's really important to understand how to identify who and what an A player is and how to attract those types of people on your team. And it is not by reading a resume. There's so much more involved. Anyway, this book is great. Who by Jeff Smart. It talks about how to attract and find those amazing top tier people to your team. And no, you don't have to have a lot of money to get A players. You have to have the right people who buy in Mm -hmm. to what it is that you're doing. And so you can get amazing A players, even if you only had $15 an hour to pay them every single hour as long as you're getting them to buy into the company vision and what you're doing as a whole as a company. So really great book, highly recommend it. And it's fun. I love, I've been focused so much on hiring over the past couple of years that this book was, it was really fun to read this book. I loved it. The next book, they're actually the same book, but just in a different format. One is called Traction and one is called Get a Grip. And this is by Gina Wickman and Mark C. Winters the same book who wrote Rocket Fuel, or the same authors who wrote Rocket Fuel. And Traction and Get a Grip are just two different formats. One is more the storytelling format, and one is more the detailed, laid out all the principles format of how to build a successful companies and get people buying into your company vision and really tracking and measuring the success of the people who work for you. So I know that not at all of you are there yet, but I, you know, I still have a lot of work to do on this, but This book really started to highlight the fact that maybe I wasn't motivating my team in the right way. Maybe I wasn't evaluating their progress in the right way. Maybe I was attracting maybe not some of the best players. And that really got me, opened my eyes to see like, okay, here are some things that we can change. Here's how we can be more productive. Here's how our team can work better together. And here's how we can get people to actually stop making excuses for why they're not getting work done. And this like was the first time I was introduced to the, I read this book probably three years ago. I read both of them but I like to get a grip better for someone like me who is a little bit more of a visual audio learner because it really painted a picture. It was more like a story. But this is my first introduction to the term KPIs or key performance indicators. And it's really about helping your team members succeed. So super great book, highly recommended. Go out, get it now, do it. It's awesome. The final book I'm going to recommend is called The Four. I just finished this. It was a great book. It's about the four, you know, leading companies in the world right now, Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook, and how they've changed the face of our economy and how people actually buy. So the premise is really interesting. I recommend this book with a little bit of hesitation. It's a wonderful book for awareness, but also I don't want you to get freaked out or in sort of scarcity mindset thinking that there's not enough to go around. Uh, The premise of the book is just basically that the people, the way people buy and consume information and products has completely changed over the years with the rise of these companies and how uh, people are actually buying. Um, Over the past uh, 10 years, in particularly more the last five, buying online and having things delivered has really changed, you know, the, the face of the retail industry. And this is just good information for all of us to know so that we can adapt and learn how to communicate better with our customers so that we can continue to build our brands, you know, while utilizing companies like this to help us grow. So I look at these things. I don't think of it as a a point of competition. I think of it as a point of learning how to use these platforms to actually help you grow your business. So with that being said, those are my 11 favorite business books right now. They are mind-blowing books that have totally changed my mind. I have lots of other books up my sleeve. Maybe thinking about doing a Flourish and Thrive book club, Thrive Tribe. What do you guys think? I don't know. You tell me. Anyway, this is Tracy Matthews signing off. I am so excited to be here. For those of you who are joining us for Laying the Foundation, I am thrilled to be supporting you for the next three months. Let's do this. We're going to party. It's awesome. All right. Have a good day. Take care until next time, everyone. Bye. Bye.